Good evening and welcome. This is the Government News Brief for Thursday, June 2, 2016. In the news this evening, opportunities being created to bridge economic divide between coastland and hinterland, Dutch engineers assisting in drainage model project, and a labor survey to determine employment status to be conducted. I am Azim Khan. Stay tuned for the details of these and other stories. Thank you for staying with us. This is the Government News Brief. Here now are the details. Is there a growing trend of murder for hire? Tiffany Rodius reports. Major reports of persons confessing to hiring killers to murder family members seem to be on the increase. Could this sort of murder by invitation be driving up crime statistics and painting Guyana as a violent society? So whether there's an increase or a decrease, we haven't done that research. But very shortly we will be addressing that there are reports of children confessing to plotting with others to kill their father and of one spouse paying to have their other half killed in many such reports the person hiring the killer is reportedly looking to profit from the removal of the spouse or family member um, those matters yes we would have had um, some reports of that nature and also we would have had the disorderly types murder which um, would have occurred basically as a result of some feud between two parties who are known to each other. But the stats and so forth, we haven't done any statistical analysis for those sorts of incidents. Recently, President David Granger called for the social impact of crime to be examined to deter the trend in interpersonal violence. We need to look at the social impact of crime and embark on a, a program within our masjid, within our mandil, within our churches, within our schools, within our homes, to develop a different pattern of relations. The president pointed out that sociologists, religious and welfare organizations must work together to resolve this trend in crime. Teaching especially young people conflict resolution is another essential aspect in curbing the trend of murder between persons known to each other. For the Government News Brief, I'm Tiffany Rogers. Opportunities for local businesses in the achievement of the Global Sustainable Development Goals, says Guyana's Minister of Business, Dominic Gaskin. Find out how in this report. Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin says the opportunities presented by the Global Sustainable Development Goals can transform Guyana. I know um, the President himself has signed on, you know, it, has put his signature to, to that document and I know His Excellency takes it very seriously. So again, if we achieve, if we can achieve the, the targets, achieve those goals, it certainly, by 2030, it would certainly mean that Guyana would be a very different country in 15 years' time. Adopted by the UN in September 2015, the SDGs aims to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all. Gaskin says there is need to be a more attractive business environment, a more diverse economy, greater employment opportunities, and a broadening of the revenue base. He is hopeful that closer collaboration with the private sector would create employment and more business opportunities. I would say um, invest, uh, continue to invest, continue to grow. Um, there are no impediments to, um, to growth in Guyana. Um, I would like to see a lot more investments in value-added export um, businesses um, and I would like to engage the private sector in a more structured way to see how we can work together to actually achieve uh, a more diversified economy. Gaskin was speaking with the government information agency on his first year in office. In 2015, the APNU plus AFC government established the Ministry of Business to give more specific focus on the development of the local business sector. For the government news brief, Nicole Thorne reporting. The status of the local labor force to be determined in 2016. Find out how in this report. The government is taking steps to establish internationally acceptable data on the country's unemployment rate, says Finance Minister Winston Jordan. Chief Statistician Lennox Benjamin 
says the Bureau of Statistics will begin its labor force and living conditions survey in January 2017. We have just finished um, an intensive um, week of work with the IDB consultant team, and I can say now that we are looking to put a labor force in the field from the 2nd of January 2017 and uh, a living condition survey, poverty related, from around August of next year. The last national census was done in 2008. However, the findings remain mostly undeclared. The last government wasn't interested in, 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 in anybody knowing what's the official rate. There, there have always been proxies about these rates, but not an official, um, internationally accepted calculation of the rate. However, Benjamin says the unemployment rate was and remains in the double digits. So we have not had a full-blown day before survey for several years, possibly touching on a decade. And in the interim, what is used is what we call proxies, like from your censuses, national population, um, your household budget surveys. And based on those proxies, we know that unemployment has been running at double digital about 10.711. The chief statistician points out the other economic indicators which can be had from a labor force survey. We're not only interested in the overall top line indicator. You want to look at your age groups, your gender profiles. Is it more among females? Mm -hmm. It has traditionally been and still is. What about your youth unemployment? And I have made the point that um, in Guyana we focus a lot on unemployment. We need to focus equally on underemployment. And we have now the emerging phenomenon over time of multiple jobs. A U.S. $1.5 million agreement for technical support and institutional strengthening of the Bureau of Statistics has been signed with the International Development Bank and the government of Guyana. Kidaki Amsterdam, Government News Brief. A Dutch engineering team together with NDIA is helping to develop a drainage model for Guyana. Renata LeFleur gives us the details. The Netherlands Dutch Risk Reduction Team, DRR team, will return to Guyana in July to produce a hydraulic model to address flooding in Guyana. Head of National Task Force Secretariat Acting, Lennox Lee explains. What they're going to be doing is to produce a model system that is for the drainage at a particular part of Georgetown. This is a computer-based model, hydraulic model, that will help us to predict the vulnerability of certain areas when rainfall occurs. Lee says the team will be working along with the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, NDIA, and will evaluate measures for proper drainage. Five engineers are going to be in Georgetown working with local engineers. They're actually going to measure part of the drainage system to assess what we have. And then they're going to put a computer model together, a hydraulic model, from which we'll be able to say which areas of Georgetown will be vulnerable at any one time during rainfall. The NDIA engineers and the Dutch team will be working every day in the Liliandal and South Rheinfeld communities to begin the test so as to complete the hydraulic model. The University of Guyana will also be involved in the project. When the model is completed, the university will then take this model, add to it and test it continually. They will also be using this model and some of the information we have as part of the training for our young engineers so that we now in Guyana will have this transfer of information this transfer of technology, and we can develop further systems throughout Guyana on our own. The project aims to develop efficient strategies to address drainage in Guyana. The project is critical since Guyana's low-lying coast, which is below sea level, faces the threat of flooding at high tide and from frequent and intense rainfall. Renetta LaFleur, reporting for the Government News Brief. Opportunities are being created to bridge the economic divide between indigenous peoples in the interior and residents of the coastland. Here is how in this Isaiah Braffitt report. Minister Lowe says there is help for indigenous peoples to create their own village economy to generate income for themselves. For 2016, actually 
two women's groups were given funding, one for a poultry farm in um, Region 1, and in Region 8, um, they want to finish building their craft shop. So two so far, but 2017 budget is coming. But the women, um, we're working along with the Small Business Bureau and the Ministry of Business. So what I did was encourage the women to send in their proposals. Lo says she's pushing the hinterland employment and youth service here, which is aimed at providing sustainable jobs for youth in the hinterland. They can be sewing for the schools, and the secondary schools, primary schools, from the, um, the cloth that has been distributed, so they can get their contracts from there. The carpentry and joinery can supply the, um, the school with, um, and the dorms if necessary, furniture and so on, and even the community. After consultation with the indigenous peoples of Paramakotoy, there is a partnership between the Ministry and the National Agriculture Research and Extension Institute, NARI, to grow, package and market tomatoes. Put your idea to them. If they like it, well then that's very good. So they liked it. They started discussing about the pros and cons and everything. And um, I'm happy to say that farmers signed up to plant tomatoes. So here's program targets 3,000 indigenous youth in 100 villages in the hinterland. The minister through her ministry continues to promote education for hinterland students, which has seen 74 students attending secondary schools in Georgetown, 28 attending the Guyana Technical Institute and the Guyana School of Agriculture. Isaiah Braffitt for the Government News Brief. Please be advised that the Ministry of Public Infrastructure's High Tide Advisory is still in effect and persons are asked to take all necessary precautions during the spring tides period of June 2 to 9, 2016. The areas that are particularly susceptible to flooding from storm surges, which may induce overtopping of sea and river defense structures, are areas along the Pomeroon River Banks, Wakenham and Leguan Islands, West Coast and West Bank Demerara, East Bank Essequibo, and the Lower East Coast Demerara. The high tides are expected to be on Sunday, June 5, 2016, at 3.40 a.m. at the height of 3.32 meters and on Monday, June 6, 2016, at 4.25 a.m. at a height of 3.20 meters. All persons residing along the riverbanks and low-lying coastal areas are advised to take all the necessary precautions against possible flooding. Precautions should also be taken by all mariners, including those operating fishing vessels and larger vessels. Use of beaches and foreshore areas for recreational purpose during this period is not advised. That concludes today's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on Gina's website. We encourage you to subscribe to our website and YouTube channel. You can also like and follow us on Facebook to be kept abreast of the new developments. Do join us again tomorrow for another edition of the Government News Brief. Thank you for watching.